Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Today, we are looking at some things that you have tagged me on over on TikTok. Yeah, TikTok mainly. Some makeup advice, some makeup um, not so much advice, some hacks, and see what we think. Just before we get into this, say do please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and if you don't want to comment, comment algorithm. It always helps. And if you like a reaction and commentary content, go and follow my other channel, Robert Reacts, um, where I do stuff. <laughs> Good sales picture. Okay, I'm itching my nose, so I don't want to ruin my makeup. Let me show you how I use a neutral red and orange and a yellow orange to conceal my blemishes. Problem with concealer is that it gets rid of extra color, but then it adds its own layer of makeup texture and it can be really distracting. We've all seen heavy, cakey foundation bumps and mountains. Problem with using green is that a lot of times people will get the green outside of the area that's red and then you have a new problem. Now you have something you have to cover. I'm, I'm gonna uh, stop these as I go through it because that's a, that's a lot in one moment. First of all, that tone isn't the green color correcting tone. That's like a, that's like a very yellow, almost neon green, which you wouldn't use for color correction. You can see on the skin that it looks like it, it doesn't blend in with the skin. Green color correctors also come in pitch and depth as well, which a lot of people don't know. They think it's just that one bright green, that one bright orange, that one bright purple. Color correctors come in depth too, just like our foundation shades do. Where you're going wrong with color correcting isn't the fact that you're doing it, it's a, it's the fact that you're using the wrong tone. I know exactly what she's gonna do and it's already pissing me off. Foundation and concealer is its job to neutralize tones in your skin. So your face becomes one full tone, preferably your skin undertone, if that's what you want. It makes a flat base for your makeup. But the use of foundation is to neutralize your skin's tone, right? Keep it at one, one level. I really need to put some bronzer on. I'm wearing a blush, but you just can't see it. So what she's saying is um, incorrect. Like she, she's using the wrong, the wrong tone anyway. Um, and I know it's that awful, awful Saint brand. It's basically like a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme. <laughs> and they always use this method to try and sell like this, like your makeup can be different. And it's just really, the way they do it, it's just so awful. You'll see, you'll see. Creating layers of makeup on your skin. It's new red. What the heck do you cover? a blemish with a bronzer color, basically. The problem with them is that you have like these light spots next to the blemish. And that high contrast between the light area and the dark area can make these stick out even more. Even just the tiniest little bit of makeup can help start to smooth that out immediately. I have kind of the same thing going on. You have this high contrast between something that's like really red it's really more purple and then like some bare skin. A blemish can look really raised because of light puffiness above it. And that's making it look way more noticeable. So wait, wait, wait. A blemish can look, look raised because of puffiness next to it. If you're gonna deepen something next to something that is raised, you're gonna make the raised area look even more raised. <laughs> That's what contour and highlight is. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna now highlight, if I'm gonna like, oh, my cheeks look too obvious. Let me deepen underneath here. My cheeks are gonna look even more obvious. You know what I mean? Add this next to that. It already makes it look more smooth. It doesn't. Like you're adding color with this bronzer anywhere else I need it. It's super important that before you start concealing blemishes, you do all the adding color first. So add it's bronzer, not, add blush. It's and not then important. come back and do those dark points. Every other tutorial is going to tell you to conceal those blemishes first, but no. do it last. This is one of my best tips. Uh, Concealing your blemishes last is a good idea by using foundation first. <laughs> so color correct if you need to. A lot of times you don't. Foundation, whether that be your tinted moisturizer, your normal foundation, neutralize the skin tone. See how much your foundation covers. See what blemishes and uneven tones your foundation covers. Then you can go in with your concealer for that extra amount, sorry, on the face, under, under eye concealer, do whatever you want. But uh, for blemishes, then go on with your concealer last to add that extra layer of coverage. Blush, a lot of times my blemishes are in my blush area. And so make sure to use something that's like more peachy instead of something purpley because that's gonna make those show up even more. A tiny brush, the smallest brush you, you own, yellow, orange, and I'm targeting the purpley blue color only where I need it. The thing with concealing blemishes. Where was the purple blue color? 
where was the purpley blue colour in in that? You know what I mean? Yellow sometimes isn't the best at canceling out blues and stuff like that. It can create ashiness or like this green tone. Yellow is great at canceling out red, absolutely. But there was no purpley blue in that blemish. It's pure red from, you know, from this point of view. She's used yellow to cover it. Conceal the spot, but you have to look at what's around it too. But you could have just done that. I can see where you have popped that bronzer and it looks like you've given yourself uneven skin tone. Using microscopic amounts of makeup, anything that looks like more red, I'm using the yellow orange. And then if it starts to like heal over, healing blemishes will often look a lot more blue. They look dull. They don't have that vibrancy, the red to them. And so I'll just use orange three. That's great, maybe perhaps on her skin tone, but on my skin tone, if I was to get a scar, again, if they do kind of have this bluey gray to them, you need to go deeper with your color corrector. And not go back to putting skin colored stuff over blemishes, because it just looks so junky to me. That is your skin, that is your skin tone. What you are using right now is very close to your, sorry, I, I've paused this so much, but it's very close to your skin tone. Why are you saying things like this? You know why? Because she's part of Saint and they're a pyramid scheme and they talk crap. I can make them d disappear. And here's what I mean about looking around. You Look what's distracting. It's like this blue blemish. Like the blemish is right here, but because it's raised, if I get rid of the blue shadow, that's right there. Then I'll just use a tiny fluffy brush to tap off any excess these three colors to conceal blemishes if you need a match for the colors that are going to work best for your distractions or your acne you just have to send me a make it free photo via my color match form and i can tell you which shades will work best for yours be warned once you use this method you'll never be able to go back to skin colored stuff because it's just not the same skin colored stuff is better here's why because all she's done is neutralized her blemishes with skin colored stuff as actually her skin tone and applied more layers of, of um, concealer. She could have just used her shade concealer, especially with the amount of product she's put on her blemishes, which isn't much at all, with a stippling brush so it's still lightweight and evened out the skin tone. It would have been done. In an ideal world, wouldn't it be perfect if we can just go around the whole face, spend hours sitting there like doing little dots and all this kind of stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. But we do have products where you can just completely smooth out the skin. And it doesn't have to be concealer. A foundation would have done that. A tinted moisturizer would have done that. Her skin looks patchy. It doesn't look any better for doing that. This brand create these ideals. They're like, yeah, you know, you don't need to seriously, why, why are you using concealer when you can sit there for, you know, give yourself an hour longer, half an hour longer to just draw dots all over your face. Also, if you have oilier skin, this is terrible. That makeup is gonna be off your face in a few minutes, especially here. No, hate it. Okay, what's next? Nothing makes me scared. Do you see my hands? Do they look like they're shaking to you? T, I just watched that video and I realized it just hit me the difference between beauty influencers now and beauty influencers of the 2010s. All the beauty girls of the 2010s worked at a Sephora, worked at a Ulta, were MAC makeup artists, <laughs> were actively doing makeup on clients and an active makeup artist then became like social media people. True. Girlies now, the talent they have is putting on skin cream. <laughs> There's no makeup artistry in it. I'm realizing that's what the tea is. Like everyone used to be a makeup artist and now we're just following regular women who like do a little bit of like blush. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to attack anyone, but I'm just realizing that's why the makeup game is what it is now. Girlies couldn't keep up with the makeup artists but they can keep up with Little Miss Drunk Elephant. Hmm. Did I just crack the code? That's very true. The makeup, you know, sphere on social media has has changed a lot. It's great to see makeup artists do, you know, like the neutral things and then go in with for like a full on cut crease and all that kind of stuff. And they do all come from like Mac or Ulta or from Sephora. Not that there's anything wrong with wanting more neutral and natural makeup. That's a trend at the moment, but it would be interesting to see what people can do when more like cut creases and stuff come in, back into fashion, you know? Because they're coming back already and people are giving it like a time period to 2016 makeup. Hi, this is Random doing a TikTok challenge. I need to do a full face of like 
random free samples if you've got any that I can maybe like try out. Sorry, I don't have. Do you know? I, mean? I don't okay. have makeup samples. Like, oh, okay, no, that's no, the worry. Really sorry it's about okay. That. I'm gonna ask around and we'll see if we can get some yeah, other ones. But thank you. No, that. don't worry. We make it look stunning, by the way. Thank you. Hiya. Doing the TikTok challenge where I need to do like face full trying out like free samples. Have you got any like little samples I can try or anything? We haven't got any. Oh, have you not got any? We've okay. Got anything left waiting for some more to come yeah in. so like the ones we do have I, I feel we should be giving to the customers when they come in yeah no that's absolutely so, fine this is a bit of a fail so far i have to go a random one i've got to do a tiktok challenge where i need to do like a full face of like samples have you got any like free samples i can try oh wow that's amazing that is so perfect thank you so thank much you. doing a tiktok challenge where i need to try like little free samples that i can collect have you got anything i can try Thank you so much. No, there you go. That's the ultra facial cream. So that's our number one. Okay. Cream. Oh wow. Thank you. So that's our Thank you. One. So you just use that one at night time. Yeah. And that one is our daytime one. So that's really good for sort of our younger skin. Oh, amazing. <laughs> they're, they're all about basically giving customers a decent size sample. So obviously the size that I get there. Yeah. They just make sure that they have a big enough one to kind of let you allow. To that's try cool. It a bit Benefit was really sweet. She gave me some. And if we go to the middle, because yeah. we have like quite a few fragrance sam samples. Oh, that would be so cool too. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Yeah. I've got a bit of a random one. I'm doing like a TikTok challenge where I'm trying out like free samples that you guys have got around here. Have you got any that I can like try out? It's a really random video. Um, we're not really meant so to give our samples. Just, just try out the testers instead of like little samples. Yeah, oh, okay. Be. No, it's absolutely fine. Oh. Hiya! I'm trying out like makeup for a TikTok video. Have you got any like little samples that I can take away and try out with me? Maybe not. Okay. No, they're all good. Thank you. So awkward. Okay, department store vibes. We're really mean. Oh my gosh, everyone was staring at me like, we're not allowed anything. Okay, let's try somewhere. Okay. Someone tell me if you agree with this. By the way, there's nothing wrong with asking for samples. I think that's absolutely fine. Having worked in beauty retail there was this sometimes there wasn't a clear um message from management or like head office whether you were saving samples for customers or giving them out to people in my mind it makes sense to give samples to people who also aren't customers because they're going to want to try it and all that kind of stuff so i don't think there wasn't something anything necessarily wrong with what she was doing people do that all the time ask for samples to try stuff out you know However, what I think what the mistake was there, as in maybe why she didn't have much luck, was that she kept saying it was for a TikTok challenge. If somebody came up to me and was like, and, and this is just me, tell me if, you know, you, you disagree. And I was working on counting. Somebody came up to me and was like, I'm doing a TikTok challenge. Immediately in my, in my mind, I would think they're wasting it. It's childish and I don't want anything to do with it. I, I'm like, that's a waste of samples. It's, it, you're using it to do a challenge, not you, you're not using it to experience a product, which more than likely makeup by Ash probably would be because she does makeup, right? So she would be using these samples and actually be like, oh, you know what, I might actually buy these. But if, if for example, two or three ki like people came into this thing and was like, we're doing a TikTok challenge, can we have samples? You'll be like, well, that's not a return customer, so why would I do that? So I think maybe if she was like, I've never used your brand before, is it okay if I can have some samples? Just because, you know, maybe my skin's a bit more sensitive, I just want to try it before, or um, I want to see how it is with other makeup, which wouldn't be a lie. Um, I think she would have had more luck. But I think going in with a TikTok challenge thing, I would be a bit like, mm, no, I'd rather somebody who was gonna use our samples out of actual interest for the product would use them. Not saying, it's just in my, you know, TikTok isn't the most like positively looked on platform. Yes, loads of people use it, but when someone's like, I'm a TikToker, you're like, mm, you know, or oh, it's from TikTok shop, you're like, uh. <laughs> Even though we do sell great stuff and then there's some great TikTokers. It's like when YouTubers first started to be a thing. The biggest trick to your makeup looking absolutely flawless is just face oil and liquid blush as your primer before you do any of the rest of your makeup. This is my thing I absolutely swear by to make my makeup look absolutely flawless every time I do it. It looks like a lot, but it's really thin layers. And like this concealer already is like very thin. And I just use it to brighten, not really to conceal. And see how it starts mixing in with the blush? 
blush and creating this perfect little pink brightening tone. A lot of people get really scared when they see me using face oil underneath my makeup, but I've been doing it for years and it works extremely well. Everything does stay in place. It doesn't separate. Now my foundation is oil-based, if that helps. Your goal is to just get a really smooth canvas. This is what you need to be doing. I think Jeffree Star should give me a brutally honest review of this technique because that's how confident I am in it. Or Michaela or anyone in the makeup community. My girl Alex Earl can do a get ready with me doing this technique and just show y'all. Blending out like a dream with that oil underneath. And yes, this is the same blush brush. I did get a different one for the concealer and put a little sticker on it so I know the difference. I'm definitely a trust the process type of makeup person. I did my own wedding makeup and if you saw that video, it was such a wreck and such a wing in it, but it turned out stunning. You just have to trust the process. I feel like if you have the right base, the right products, the right blending, no matter how you start, it's gonna end up well. I really do feel like most primers are such a ripoff and just like a good skin prep does all the difference. For me, I think face oil does the best job at that. And by the way, yes, I bake this. I love baking this little line on my nose. And it does last too. I used to be a nurse. And so if I did do my makeup, I would have to have it last 12 plus hours. So I feel like I know what I'm talking about. Those days I wasn't trying to wear any makeup at all, but when I did, it lasts. So I know what I'm talking about a little. Top with a hydrating face spray and then a setting spray. I like to highlight the tip of my nose while everything's still like a little dewy. That's just me. Last but not least is of course more liquid blush. And yeah, you might say that's too much, that's too pink, but I feel like it's really just not enough. Liquids on top of powders is such a slay. Here is our final look. I love blush. What do we think? I personally love. Yeah, I think it looks great, actually. Um, a few things I would say, though, for, okay, so Mia's oily skin, never, never in a million years. I do wonder, though, why people hydrate so much on their skin. Um, because you can over, over hydrate skin before, and over moisturize skin before makeup. You, that's ab absolutely a thing. Um, I do wonder why they give themselves all this hydration and completely mattify everything with a powder. Um, but I mean, it looks amazing. I mean, the pink thing isn't like, it's not far off being a normal situation, right? You can get primers and, um, um, yeah, primers that are pink tone or like light lilacs or color correcting primers that are green, orange, um, peach, whatever. So it's not a crazy out there situation. It's not completely wild to mix this cream product with an oil that will dilute it a little bit more or almost borderline dissolve a product and, and use that on the face to, to create an even base for your foundation. That's not a wild situation. I've never used these products before together, so I wouldn't know exactly, but that isn't crazy to me. It might look crazy, it might seem crazy, but it's not. And then concealing on top, your concealer might have more of a yellow tone, or like, um, which a lot of people just buy anyway, which is gonna neutralize some of that pinkness. How great is it to see a product as well that's almost used up? It's been such a long time. <laughs> since I've seen somebody hold up a product that's like fully used. I love those brushes for foundations. Big, you know me, and powder brushes for foundation, beautiful. You have that solid, firm surface, that density that's pushing the product into your skin. A lot of other brushes just kind of move a foundation around and wipe it across the skin, whereas this would fully push and pack the foundation onto your skin. Yeah, okay, so sorry, my point. MAC Fix Plus is not a setting spray it doesn't set the foundation. It might help to refresh and make it look a little bit nice. Maybe you've over powdered and it kind of like, it, it brings all your foundation together. There's no long lasting properties to it. And the reason I say that is obviously I used to work from years ago and before the internet was crazy over setting sprays, Mac Fix Plus never had the wording setting spray on it. And we were also told it's not a fixing or setting spray. Fix meant as to repair, not to fix to the skin. Um, but it's a great spray if you've, you know, used a lot of powders and things like that. Um, I used to use it all the time. If I use a powder foundation, I would spray it, or I would actually drench her face in it and then fan it dry. So it made the um, powder look nicer. And she says, um, at the end of it, she's like, liquids on top of powders is such a slay. I don't know if she said that because everyone's always, always like, you can't use liquid on top of powders. 
Um, you can, you can. Here's, this is why I always say creativity and individuality have no rules, but makeup has a theory. Because the theory behind this here is you can absolutely use creams um, on top of powders, especially when you've used so much oil under your foundation and it's making its way through. Uh, the likelihood is a lot of the textures you're putting on your face aren't staying those textures, but also you can you can do it. <laughs> I, I, there's been a lot of times when I've done like, you know, certain kinds of creams on top of powders and it's been absolutely fine. You want to be more careful when it comes to liquids, like liquid highlights, um, liquid tints on top of powders, and more than likely it's going to break down the product. But the, I think I was tagging that one quite a lot and I think I was tagging it because it looks initially quite wild, but it's actually not, the whole pink situation actually isn't that, oh my God, my hair isn't that far off being an actual product that's in existence. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, thank you so much for tagging me, all those. If there's anything else you want to tag me in, you can do it on Instagram, um, TikTok. That's all really, isn't it? Yes. So follow me there. Make sure you follow my reaction channel. Subscribe over there. Sorry. Um, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.